Hello everyone. Uh, I am doing my first drive on 10.3.1. This video is going to come out before I do all my, uh, well, edit all my 10.3 videos. Oh, I'm not enable it to show you this error. Oh. Okay, it's not going to do it. As you can see, the GPS bug is still here. Yeah, I'm on this road. <laughs> yeah. Now turn right onto Albert Cove Road. Let's see if that does it right. Okay. All right, went. Um. So yeah, we got to deal with that GPS bug still. Uh, like, quite often I get that. Um. It seems like it just can't lock on the GPS quick enough after the car sleeps a long time. That's what we think might be happening is that the car sleeps. Um, I, I work from home, so I updated this morning whenever the update came out, mid midday today, and then the car went back to sleep. Uh, I drove last night. Um, so I haven't driven since, and oh, this is too fast. While it's too fast, the accuracy, oh, interesting. This makes, this is a lot different than what it did um, uh, in the morning on, oh, okay. I'm gonna see if it swerves, so hopefully it doesn't swerve. That was good. I attribute this change to not having harsh sun. This is my first drive in a while at night. Um, in the morning on 10.3, I had very harsh sun. And so that would cause, uh, I think the car to have a lot of confusion, a lot of shadows on the road and a lot of, you know, the harsh sun from back on the back left. So the merging onto the highway was kind of squirrely. Uh, also, it, they, in the change log it said merging on the highway or something but would be a lot faster acceleration. I didn't feel that at all yesterday. But with 10.3.1, I definitely feel that. Um, it, but I, obviously it's nighttime versus um, first thing in the morning with a harsh sun. I, my opinion is that the neural nets are the same between the two versions. They changed something with automatic emergency braking, that being said. Uh, I'm going to make sure to keep both my hands on the wheel for the highway driving, especially. Um, the, uh, honestly, that's the best practice anyway. Um, but it's more, yeah, it's just like that. And, okay, I'm sorry. thought there was a car parked on the side of the road, but uh, they were just merging over behind this truck. Seeing that yellow light for the truck speed sign right here as red lights. It's because of the truck. I don't know if this will do anything. I'm gonna report that because it's the it took on the flashing yellow lights saying that truck was going too fast. But it took on the color of the truck's brake lights to simulate a flashing red light on the highway. So that's not good. It need it it should just show flashing yellow and it should ignore that because that's just what everyone does I and mean, it's only for it. the sign for the trucks going too fast and so it warns the trucks hey slow down but it has nothing to do with cars normal traffic Like I was saying earlier, this video is probably going to come out tomorrow night, uh, most likely, and then I'm going to do the rest of my Asheville videos from there. Um, like I, my opinion, I think the neuro is the same. The only reason this on wrap was so different is because of the lack of sun. So it's kind of hard. It's not the most apples to apples comparison when you're 
compared to night and day and then also if you add some rain into it and of course you have different traffic conditions right now on a seat by car it changes lanes here it should okay and then, good it didn't well this car decided to speed up behind me I'm pressing to accelerate this is how fast it should accelerate to go around this truck and it should have an above offset that that lane change was automatic so it should have an offset above your set speed limit for passing it should have a passing offset so most people when they pass they go above the speed limit they get around the car quickly and back over In my opinion it's safer to do that so something you have to really pay attention to uh, or we backtrack something that I think needs to be changed and with single stack that would greatly improve performance of uh, passing on the highway that would really improve overall highway performance another thing so I'm slowing down here now the car is gonna be able to eventually do this way better than I can so I slowed down to make sure these cars had enough room so I didn't get beside of them because I need to stay in this lane and get off the next exit. So it ended up working out really well for me to slow down to 65 because for some reason these cars aren't going to speed limit yet. And so we're gonna get off the highway here. I've not done this particular route off the highway on 10.3 or 10.3.1, but this is the first time going this route. It's coming weekend. It's coming weekend, I hope. Seems to be much faster off this exit ramp. It's not slowing as quickly though. It's slowing acceptably well. I wish it would slow a little bit sooner. That's just my preference. And odd change. It would used to stay in the left lane. And now it stays in the right lane here. Hey, I, I'm looking forward and my hands on the wheel, okay? <laughs> um it so it normally would always go in the left lane every single time. Um so this is a change. This is a, uh, it's actually a good thing. It should stay in the right lane, and it need, since far up ahead, I'm going to take another right, and so this is the appropriate choice uh, to be in. I'm curious if it's going to try and get in the left lane at all, as long as there's no traffic. It should just stay in the right lane as long as there's no traffic. Again, I'm looking forward. And also, this is the first time I've ever used beta turning from this lane. Did it good? As long as it doesn't try and get over in the left here. So, I think this... Who is he? I see it got rid of the lines. See, on the road, I don't know how well you can see from it being dark, but the road, the lane markings aren't there. And so, it, the car does a good job at marking the lane markings uh, and when they're not actually there. And as you can see, it almost crossed the, the lane right there as it was going, cresting that hill. Okay, so that was, uh, no. Okay, that was, that was odd. It started slowing down, and I was like, okay, that, I was about to say that was good. And then it started speeding back up again. I'm like, well, why, why is it speeding back up? I, I think it was because the light was still yellow. I was like, go. Oh, it, it probably has the logic now. It's like, okay, maybe we can make it through this yellow light. And so it's having to relearn based on the assertiveness. I have the average assertiveness set. And so perhaps it's trying to relearn when it can go through a yellow light and when it needs to actually stop for a red. I think the previous update, 10.2, actually worked very well. Okay, this is going to just swing over. It's a little bit less chaotic if you will it used to just kind of swing over quickly this was more of a smooth swing over and I've noticed that with 10.3 these type of curve movements not turns like this is a, would be a turn of course um, but these like curves through the road like this where you're kind of meandering um, have been improved at 10.3 and 10.3 at 1 of course and um, I'm towing it okay that should have, uh, so I, I turned on the bl blinker and I pressed the accelerator. It was still breaking for that car. 
and now we need to actually go ahead and get back over that's what it should have done is got over in this lane to pass that car and got back around it it could have slowed down like it did um, but in terms of I'd say I mean multiple factors that aren't super critical in your know, driver's comfort you don't want to slow down all the way to a stop and then speed back up uh, in terms of efficiency that's one thing in terms of just overall time to get to your destination that's another thing a few minor things add up to just the overall better drive experience if it was going to just go ahead and pass that car okay so this was good it started slowing for that light at a very appropriate time it could be just because I'm going pretty slow so it's able to uh, react more appropriately let's see how it does this turn up here across the bridge normally it kind of slows down too harshly let's see how smooth it can do this here we got a person here that's probably gonna disturb it okay so it could be smoother but it did it handled it well and we got a car coming out in front of us Wow, um, it didn't break at all for that car and it should have slowed down just a little bit. Um, I, I was comfortable enough leaving it, doing it what it wanted to do, but it should have slowed down. I would have gotten that close to that car. Because if that car decided last minute to stop, then I could have potentially ran into it. Uh, obviously, I would have jerked a wheel out and not have had that happen, but uh, it's something you got to watch out for. This road right here has really, really poor lane markings. Like it, um, it had a pretty quick phantom brake right there. Ooh. Yeah, as you can see, it's struggling a lot. It, it always struggled on this road. Right here, there's no lane line at all. Um, well, I can vaguely see one. Um, I don't know if you can see the outline, but you can vaguely see the old wing line. The roads are also a little bit wet. It's doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. It's about as good, maybe the tiniest bit better than, um, I think it was 10.1 or 10.0. It was a while since I've done this. Oh, that was, that was pretty good. It doesn't need to stop here though. This is not a stop. So I'm pressing that through up the accelerator. And I'll let go now. Now turn right onto South King Street. Okay. I think this is a good spot to come. Since we're at a light, um, we have, this is a one-way road. You can only take a right here or go straight. And, well, um, I don't know if that was good or not because it should have crept, crept, crept more. It should also be, yeah, I was going to say, get over in the left lane. Um, ooh. Okay, I should have disengaged there. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Let's go ahead and report that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start to fog up a little bit. In 500 feet, turn left onto Third Avenue East. And now this is gonna be interesting. It's probably gonna swerve into this lane here. Yeah, see, it's really hesitant. Now turn left onto Third Avenue East. So I do say I don't want to speak too soon. That truck being a little bit too far forward definitely messed with it. But I will say we made a zero disengagement drive um, here. So this is where I'm stopping because at this point I'm looking for parking. Right. I'm looking for parking. Uh, I'm gonna go to the left. Uh, but yeah, everyone. That was, a, that was a good drive. Obviously, it had some weird anomalies. Um, otherwise, I, w I wouldn't call it anything crazy bad. Uh, it's just obvious room for improvement, as always. But um, if you have any questions for me, or about this drive, or anything else in particular, I would love to hear your comments down below. And I hope to see you on the next videos, watching for 10.3 up in Asheville. And look forward for this week, uh, well, it'll be next week when I post them, but this week I'm going to be recording some videos of my normal test route to Carl Sandberg and through Hendersonville down Main Street, which I am currently on. Hope to see you in the next videos. Thanks for watching, everyone.